Okay, so there was a lot of request for discussing the ICU cases which we see daily. But the problem is what is happening is when we get free from the uh, routine shifts and routine duties, it becomes too late and then to make a PPT of that, it becomes a challenge. That's why we are not able to discuss the very interesting point which are, we are seeing on daily basis. So I thought of discussing um, this in a casual manner and if required, we'll put some images of that particular case for discussions. So this is a cafe. We have taken a permission here. So record. So this was an interesting case. Uh, this was some neurological case. He had a trauma, trauma patient who underwent crinectomy and then on weaning, we did a tracheostomy and the patient was shifted to ward on TPs. So he was doing fine. Then one night he was shifted back after four or five days from the ward that this patient is having tachycardia. And, uh, so for an observation, this patient was shifted back to the ICU. And in the ICU, the resident uh, ruled out the causes of tachycardia. There was, he ruled out whether there is a fever, whether the patient may be having pain, may not be able to communicate because the GCS was low. So uh, he also thought that this patient may be hypovolemic. He fluid resuscitated the patient. BP was around 160. So he tried to rule out all the causes in the ECG. It was also sinus tachycardia, chest was clear, could not figure out. Then did an echo also to see if something uh, regarding the IVC and other factors. It was fine also to rule out pulmonary embolism. Everything was done in the 2D echo. The PA pressures were, sorry for the disturbance. The PA pressures were normal. There was no evidence of uh, pulmonary embolism. And the patient was pouring good amount of urine also. Then in the morning when the shift changed, the new resident came and then the, he also tried to figure out what could be the causes of tachycardia, this piece and explain. And uh, the next hour, the sister comes to uh, sister comes to the uh, duty doctor, resident, that the urine hour of this particular hour is 50 ml. Earlier it was around 100 ml, 80 ml and now this is 50 ml. So he had a doubt. He saw the urine color, it was fine, it was not dehydrated, it was clear. Then he palpated the bladder. And he felt that the bladder, there is, the bladder is a little bit palpable. And, but the patient was pouring good amount of urine. So, giving a benefit of doubt, the resident asked the staff to, or he changed the Foley's catheter, the urinary catheter. And after the urine catheter was changed, there was around 100, uh, 800 ml of uh, urine was drained. And the tachycardia almost settled down. The heart rate which was there for 130s, 140s, it came down to 105 and 102. So we have known that obstruction, urinary obstruction is one of the causes of tachycardia. In conscious patients, they uh, present with that, they uh, they give the history that not able to pass urine. In the patients who are irritable, they also uh, present when the patient is too much ir irritable and the bladder is obviously palpable and we know that the there is a urinary obstruction. But in patients, especially in the ICU or intensive care unit, those who are neurologically impaired, the DC is down, on tracheostomy, cannot communicate. According to the books also, obstruction of the urinary bladder is one of the ca cause of tachycardia which one should rule out in such patient. So make, make a habit that while taking rounds of the patient, while you are palpating abdomen, always make a habit of palpating the urinary bladder. So this is one unusual common cause of tachycardia in such patients. So this was interesting to share. If you have any other thoughts or any other feedback on this, do post in the comment. See you in the next video and do read more about it. Thank you.